Hello and welcome to this Union Solidarity International News Update. My name is Walton Pantland and I'm joined today by the inimitable Andrew Brady. Today we're bringing you the latest trade union news from Sundrenched Caledonia. Andrew, what's been catching your eye this week? As per usual, Walton, Chris, mm -hmm. it's been one of our featured campaigns for nearly 10 months now and there's a reason for that. Over the last couple of weeks we've been featuring even more content than we usually have been, uh, in particular our documentary in Greece talking about the human rights abuses of women uh, and a documentary relating to HIV and we were proud to be featured on our partner organisation Radio Bubbles podcast and an absolutely fantastic interview with Zoe Mavrudi who is producing the documentary in partnership with ourselves which is nearly 50 minutes long and if you have a spare 50 minutes please listen mm -hmm. to it, it's an absolutely fascinating account of the abuse of the state via the media and the police and Zoe's excellent analysis of the forces of the state and what they're doing to undermine democracy mm -hmm. through the action of human rights, it's an absolutely fascinating tale and there's one that we are very proud to be associated with and financially mm -hmm. supporting and of course we have the Viome workers working mm -hmm. in Thessalonica in the north of the country and I'm very pleased and proud to say that our man in Athens, a very good comrade, Vangelis Lagos, actually visited the workers this weekend and has actually produced a video statement that we will be rele releasing mm -hmm. on our media streams very shortly and I will be visiting Athens between the 7th and the 10th of March and I will be on Radio Bubbles International programme to talk about some of the work that we've been doing in Greece including the documentary that I've referred to and attending a conference in Athens speaking to the rank and file trade union members which I'm very proud to do on mm -hmm. behalf of USI and we're very pleased to be associated with helping people in that country get their voice out mm -hmm. and get their workers message and indeed human rights message out to a wider audience. Absolutely and in fact there's one other story uh, out of Greece which I think is a really good one and that is the the story of Metropolis Stores. It's a it's a music store a bit like HMV in the UK and Ireland and uh, it's a similar story in that uh, we, we've seen what happened with HMV going bankrupt, a lot of people losing their jobs, uh, HMV workers in uh, Limerick and Cork and Ireland occupying their shops to get their back pay. Something similar, similar happened in Greece but uh, the story was even worse and that is um, a lot of Metropole store workers lost their jobs and they weren't paid their back pay. The, the owner own, owes them, um, I think it's 600,000 euro in back pay. He claims he doesn't have the money, but he's managed to find the money to sponsor the Greek Eurovision Song Contest. And so the workers from Metropole went to protest outside the song contest and there were these images of riot police protecting, protecting this contest. And for me, that, that just seems like such a strong image about the kind of Europe we can expect if austerity continues. The spectacle must go on, the police will protect it and the workers can protest at, uh, at the fact that they're not getting, getting paid their wages. Um, what about that Nestle story? Well, I think you're more qualified to speak about it than me since you wrote the article for us, Walton, and it's by far our most popular article of the year so far, with thousands of hits on their website, to talk about the disgraceful, absolutely disgraceful, I mean, sometimes you've got to pinch yourself and replay the comments of chairman and CEOs on a repeated basis to, to, to try and actually yeah. think that they and digest that they've actually said yeah. what this, uh, what it is, is uh, Peter Brabeck is the chairman of Nestle and it's a company that's not very popular with activists for a lot of reasons anyway, but he comes across like a comedy villain saying that uh, water isn't a human right and we'd be better off if it's owned by big corporations like Nestle, of course, you can uh, put it in nice clean bottles and sell it to you. And uh, his comments are just so unbelievably shocking that we thought it was a really good idea to highlight those comments and link it into the fact that there is actually a petition to the European Commission at the moment telling them that they need to establish the principle that water is indeed a human right. So please visit our website, read that article, watch the horrifying video from the Nestle chairman and uh, do sign the petition. Just on the article, Walton, of course, the reason why we featured it, not only because of the absolutely outrageous comments by the chairman of Nestle, it actually taps into a wider issue that is, of course, being rolled out across the world at the moment, and that is the agenda of privatisation. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter what the 
product is or whether it's the environment, everything is commodified, including water and it's a basic human right for people to be able to access water and indeed clean water and the comments by the Nestle chairman is an example of the wider pandemic that is across Europe which is they are using the financial crisis that they themselves are absolutely involved in to further roll out their agenda of privatisation and that's the wider issue that mm -hmm. we need to be mindful of. It's not just about Nestle. Nestle is just an illustration of a wider issue that is going on across the world in, at the moment and Nestle is just one example of major conglomerates using this crisis to commodify everything they can get their hands on. Absolutely. There is good news as well however and uh, something that we found really encouraging is the progress being made in India. Um, as you know, we've been raising money through USI for a project to organize workers in um, the brick kilns of India, and that organization's been going well. Do you want to give us an update? On yeah, just that our project in India has benefited around 7,000 workers and thousands more in terms of families because the situation in the brick kiln industry in India is that the families, of course, travel with the predominantly male workers within that industry and through the money that we've raised the our partner organization Prias has been able to set up community schools to help benefit the, the families of workers who are directly involved in the brick kiln industry the workers have already had a 50 percent wage rise as a result of the organizing efforts and only last week the the union the, in the brick kiln sector the that we are supporting had its first public meeting yeah, where hundreds of people attended that meeting and let's not be uh, too enthused about the work that we've done because we know there's so much mm. more to do. That is a vast, vast country as we know involving millions of workers just in the brick kiln sector and we are just making a small dent and making a small bit of progress in an industry that needs far more mm. people supporting this project and the work of Rias because it involves literally millions of workers. We're pleased to be able to support them in a very small way, but if you as an individual or perhaps as an organisation watching this YouTube clip or iTunes download want to get involved in helping to actually roll out that work across India because we only have limited resources, then please get in touch with us because we'll be only too pleased to put you in touch mm -hmm. with people on the ground that can help develop that work even further. But it's very pleasing and we're very proud that the, the workers had their first public meeting, but we realise there's a hell of a lot more to do in terms of helping the workers on the ground. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Now, the UK's credit rating has been downgraded from AAA, which is demonstration a surprise. that uh, even by their own standards, uh, austerity is absolutely failing to do anything at all of, of any value. It's destroying the economy. Uh, of the UK and Europe. Uh, voters have just rejected austerity and some rather confusing results, in fact, from Italy. And uh, I think all of this is, is highlighting what um, economists have been saying to us. We've had uh, web conferences and conversations with economists over the past few months. And uh, indeed, since we last spoke to you, we've had uh, four really interesting conversations with economists. And we'd encourage you to go to go and uh, listen to those or, and, and read some of the comments about it. Um, we've spoken to Anne Pettifer. Um, to Paul Omerod, uh, to Ricardo Bellafiore, and also to Elise Buckle, who is uh, from the, the finance sector of uh, Uni, the, the global union. And uh, essentially, the argument coming from all of them is the same, and, and it's something that you know as well as we do, austerity doesn't work. But the important thing is that they have evi an evidence base for this. They can show that austerity doesn't work. And I think now is the time when it's clearly failing. The, the economy is doing really, really badly. It's in the media. Everyone knows it's doing badly. I think now is our opportunity to really, really press the arguments for an alternative as strongly as we can and, and really get that onto the political agenda. Yeah, I'd just like to pick up on one of the two of the issues that were discussed in some of those web conferences. In particular, Ricardo Bellafiores, who's a very good friend of USI and has participated in previous podcasts with us. And I've actually listened to this podcast in several, several times now. Obviously, I've got far too much time in my hands. But a really important point that Ricardo Bellafiore makes is that having a very simplistic wage rise in those account surplus countries such as Germany actually brings with it a number of problems such as widening the pay disparity that mm -hmm. already exists within Europe and that 
we should be encouraging wage rises across the board, not mm -hmm. just in those account surplus countries like Germany, and that having a wider policy and in fact, in essence, a, a new deal that is based on a new economic programme, identifying and targeting youth unemployment mm -hmm. and the gender dynamics, which we all know about in terms of women also being disp disproportionately affected by this crisis, is very important to get to the root causes of how we find a solution to this. And I'd also refer you to a web conference that we had a couple of weeks ago with the, the brilliant, absolutely brilliant mm -hmm. James K. Galbraith, where he makes these exact points that we just can't have a national minimum wage rise, which in itself is welcome because it goes directly into the mm -hmm. pockets of people. We need to be talking about a new deal. And this is one of the common themes that's coming out of our critical economic series that is, involve some of the world's best progressive economists, that we have to have a wider economic programme with a higher minimum wage being part of it across all countries, not just in account surplus countries, and that we need a wider economic programme. So we would encourage you to look into those YouTube web chats and iTunes podcasts if you're on the bus, if you're on the tube, or as what I do when I cycle into work, I like to listen to myself, it's just a, it's a bad problem I've got, I must admit that, but really take some time to look at some of the common themes that are developing, including a debt cancellation that we mm -hmm. had for developing countries at the millennium, about this is one of the only ways that we can get ourselves out of this crisis, and the banks that created this problem will just need to cut their losses if we're going to have economic growth and jobs created. Absolutely, and uh, I think on that fine and inspiring note, we can thank you once again for your interest, for watching this video, for downloading this podcast, and uh, solidarity.